Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does. and They've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory, and welcome back to another episode of The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about the rumors that seem to be true that Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner are dating and how this makes me nauseated because I really do not like either of these characters. Now, May and I have talked about Chalamet in the past, uh, not to be a spoiler alert, but if you go, it's probably episode 25 or 30 where we did overrated actors. It was a two part series where we each gave our 10 and he is mentioned in that list. I will not mention what number he is uh, at all, but Chalamet is one of these mysteries and it harkens back to that episode I did about 10 episodes back about the poll that was given, uh, there was a research group that did this poll, like what actors would make you return to the theaters. And the majority of these actors were probably most famous in the 90s, so a lot of Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts, Clooney, these types, Johnny Depp. And then the top 20 was not Chalamet. And I think that's revealing because Chalamet has been pushed down our throat big time since Call Me By Your Name. And so the last five years, it's Chalamet, Chalamet, he's the next star. You build franchises around Chalamet, he's an amazing talent. And I think that middle America looks at Chalamet, if they even know Chalamet, because many of them are just really into The Rock and, and Kevin Hart. They, they look at Chalamet and they're like, what? It's truly an emperor has no clothes. It's not to say that Chalamet does not have any talent at all. But it's like he's been given this pedestal of the it guy. This is going to be the star of the future. And I think he has yet to demonstrate it. And I think my revulsion towards Chalamet, and I'm not going to speak for May, but I think my revulsion for Chalamet has more to do with Hollywood pushing him as the next generational iconic young man actor than actually his work. And I think America used to be a meritocracy and we wouldn't hand this title to people until they had done the work to earn it. Nobody gave it to Brad Pitt after Taps. Nobody gave it to Tom Hanks after Bachelor Party. You had to earn this stuff and Chalamet has been deemed the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. For some time now, and if you look at his work, does it justify that? And to me, that is questionable. I do remember seeing Chalmers for the first time. I think it was on Homeland. He plays the boyfriend of the of, of one of the kids, or maybe he's the son. I don't remember, but I think I first remember seeing him on Interstellar. He plays uh, the son of All Right, All Right, All Right. But really, it was Call Me By Your Name in Lady Bird in 2017 that kind of launched him. And like, in Lady Bird, he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> he's fine. He's good in Hostels. Hostels comes out that year. That's the Christian Bale Western movie. He's fine in that. Beautiful boy. He's okay. Then he does the Netflix movie The King where he plays uh, a young English king, if I'm not mistaken. I remember seeing that movie. He was good. He's good. He can pull the British accent. That's great. Then he's Laurie and Little Woman. Going back to the Christian Bale full circle because Bale was a little woman in the 1990s version with Susan Sarandon. He's fine. He's fine. Then he does French Dispatch and Dune in 2021. And he's also in Don't Look Up in 2021 as all. But look, let me, let me focus on Dune. So Dune is is great. Denis Villeneuve is an amazing director and I think the movie is good, but is the movie good because of Chalamet? That's the question. And this goes back to that episode on who would drag you to the theaters because we've so rely on IP now that we think 
we can't differentiate whether or not it's the actor or the IP that's the brand. See, the 90s actors, Hanks, Roberts, Clooney, these guys were the brand. Denzel were the brand. And now with Chalamet, we don't know. So look, I mean, Dune was stunning. But Rebecca Ferguson was in it. Oscar Isaac was in it. Jason Momoa was in it. Zendaya, of course, was in it. Briefly. And he's fine in it. But this idea that he is the Christ... I, it, it's resentful because what has he really done? He's done Dune, Little Woman, Hostels he's supporting, Call Me Out By Your Name, and Lady Bird. And to me, again, it's like he has not earned the title. Not to mention, and this is on a side note, I don't find the man to be handsome. I find him to be metrosexually unattractive. He's very feminine, the way he dresses and everything. And he's not the type that's going to lead an action movie. Now, this might change, of course. He's not masculine. Men are not going to go see a movie that Chalamet's in, unless it's, again, previous IP. But he's not the type of guy that people are be like, oh, I, you know, like a man, what, like men want to be and women want to bang. I know there are women, some women that like Chalamet, but I also know quite a lot of women who think that he's too girly. But there's no man I know who wants to be Timothy Chalamet, aside from all the trappings of fame. Either way, so he's dated Lily Rose Depp, who's Johnny Depp's daughter. He's dated some other actresses, but it's been rumored that he's with Kylie Jenner. Now, Kylie Jenner, I mean, she's in a cause of her own as well. Look, when it comes to the the Kardashians, I, I don't disrespect them for hustling. Um... They, and I think this is as, as, as uh, Kanye called the mom, she called Chris Jong-un. So, you know, that the idea that she's the kind of the, the, the mastermind behind all of this. And look, they hustle and they make brands and stupid people buy them. So look, Kylie Jenner was in 2019 branded a billionaire, the youngest billionaire, because she sells cosmetics that stupid girls buy. And so look, do I get mad at the Kardashians for having a television show for years that were on E and now I think it's on Hulu and constantly promoting uh, themselves and the mom essentially pawing off all the daughters? You know, on one level, it's trashy, but no, I mean, they're out there to make a buck like every human. It's the people who respond to them that the, the ones I'm like why let's take a break I wanted to let you know about some of the other feeds here at the Eclectico Gregorio the oldest one we have is the Awakened Man which mostly deals with holistic health medical cover-ups ways to biohack your life to ensure longer longevity medical conspiracies and naturopathic stuff we also have and that there's probably about 400 500 episodes over there we started that one back in 20. 17 2016 i believe we also have the female holistic health apothecary which originally started as an essential oils feed and there's about a hundred episodes on essential oils particular essential oils like rose and lavender and sandalwood and so forth and then later i morphed it into more topics that are regarded for female health female specific we've had that feed also since 2016 and then lastly we have confessions of an obese child which deals with my childhood obesity and trauma that came from it. So it's a great feed for those who dealt with childhood trauma that led you to have addictions to alcohol or food. And I interview several people and what it was like to grow up overweight and all the difficulties of losing the weight and then keeping it off and trying to metamorphosize into a regular weighted person. So check out those feeds at the Eclectical Gregory on Apple or Spotify. So on one level, Kylie Jenner represents the best of the Kardashians and that she's the one who's been able, maybe because she is the youngest, see Kim kind of paved the way of thoughtery, as we uh, as the term is used, thoughts, that, that hoe over there, thoughtery. She paved the way in the family, and Kylie Jenner in some ways just being raised on keeping up with the Kardashians is the one that's reaping the benefits and came up with the idea, or her handlers came up with the idea of doing the cosmetics and therefore she is the, the most financially successful arguably of all of them as being the billionaire but 
she's done nothing. She's done nothing. She's done nothing. And she's complete trash. And I think many people would agree with me now. The Gen Zers, the ones who follow her on Instagram and whatnot, adore her. And again, it, it makes me cry for our future to think about this. But Kylie Jenner has done tons of plastic surgery, like a lot of the Kardashians. Uh, so it just, again, lack of respect for, for women who do a lot of plastic surgery because it screams insecurity. And I would tell you, if you're a woman listening to this, look, unless you're morbidly overweight and you get liposuction as a whole, plastic surgery, like excessive tattooing, is an outward sign of inner dysfunction. And, it, it, and it's a signal to a large majority of people that you have massive insecurity problems. And it's best not to do it. But she's dated tons of people in her past. Tyga, you know, like the Kardashians, a lot of them like the black rappers or the black NBA players. Travis Scott, of course, she has a child with Travis Scott. And most, the rumor is that Kylie Jenner and Chalamet are dating. Uh, they were spotted hanging out, going on taco dates. And then they have not made it official that they are dating but it's like, oh, it's like the irresistible force and the immovable object if both of them were just disgusting and, and talentless. And to think that these two are dating is like the, the pinnacle of celebrity gossip, right? This is like TMZ going in orgasm because you have the it actor with what what is what is Kylie Jenner famous for? You know, in some ways, like Chalamet being with Lily Rose Depp makes sense, given that Lily Rose Depp's mom, um, Vanessa Paradis, was was an, a model and somewhat of an actress, and he he is more into that Euro handsomeness. Like he's very Euro in his look and his style and all these things like that. And you know the Euros are known to be more feminine. No offense to Alexander Skarsgård, who's kind of the exception to that, but. That, that kind of coupling to me makes sense in, in that kind of coupling of like this the, the young Lily Rose Depp with the Chalamet is, is more in alignment. But when you get Chalamet with the trashiest family, I mean, what's the over under and STDs in the Kardashian thoughts brood? I mean, seven? I mean, in, in an all time, look like with 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 STDs that that can be knocked out with antibiotics like chlamydia and syphilis. What is it? Fifteen, fifteen. I, I I just it it boggles the mind, and I think there are a lot of people who just think both of these people are trash and talentless. Now, with Kylie Jenner, I don't think that that opinion is going to change. I think most people, aside from Gen Zers and a certain socioeconomic group that may maybe gravitate toward her will uh most people think that she's kind of trashy chalamet i do i do hold out hope because as i mentioned i i don't resent chalamet i just think that he's been given the platter before he's earned the platter and i think he does show signs of talent but he's got to, i know this is a strange word in 2023 america he needs to earn it and he has not earned the title of the it boy Look at Paul Mescal. I think Paul Mescal has a better chance and is arguably a better actor in roughly the same age as Chalamet. But Chalamet is given the title. And see, and, and that's that's the problem I have with it. Is Dune is good because it's via news Dune. And so we have Chalamet coming out with Wonka. And I, I believe it's coming out on Christmas. You can see the trailer. You could see for yourself. And he is going to have to open that movie. And yes, Wonka is previous IP. And you know, the, the young actors. Kudos to Zendaya. Because Zendaya is doing that tennis movie. But that's not previous IP. So we will see how that movie does. But Chalamet is going to do Wonka. And I don't know. The the, the 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 talk on Wonka is is not good. And we'll see. We'll see if he can open a movie. And we'll see if he can pull that fine line where Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka is iconic and a little creepy, but not really. And then Johnny Depp's was way over the top. Um, I, I'm coming off as a pedophile creepy. So we'll see what he can do in terms of Wonka. 
And then he's planning to do some a Bob Dylan movie, which could work. I mean, I'd like to see him try something different. And he kind of has a young uh, Dylan look to him. And then, of course, Dune Part 2 is coming out. And everybody in the world is in Dune Part 2. That's young Florence Pugh, Austin Butler. And so that movie is going to do exceedingly well. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Wonka, I don't know. We'll see. So I hold out hope for Chalamet. I just hope that he can like lessen the metrosexual, weird, um, this is the new masculinity vibe that here he and Harry Styles are pulling off. And that he can you know, you know, I just try to be a little more masculine. I think that would help his career because, again, he alienates a large majority of men. And I think also if he can try to do an action, like a true action movie series or, or something where he bulks up, then maybe he's got the chance to be the next iconic pit and the next iconic cruise and earn it. But right now, it's to me, the emperor has no clothes, Chalamet has limited talent, and he's been given the platter and the, the, and the, the role of Christ, and he has not deserved it. But either way, I hope this relationship is mythical, is apocryphal, and it goes away because, I mean, I think Chalamet could, des could definitely could deserve somebody better. I mean, on one level, you could argue that he's using her to elevate her fame. But come on, Chalamet, A, you're not publicly dating her, so you're not really using her. And B, there's a lot of women you could date that would elevate your career better than better than um, Kylie Jenner. Unless you're trying to appeal to that, that, that socioeconomic group, that Jenner, that people really like. I mean, I'd love to see you with somebody a little more glammy. Not like a Sydney Sweeney, someone like a know, Daisy Edgar Jones. I could see you with somebody like that. I mean, that's who I could I could see you with. Don't go with Kylie Jenner. I mean, I, I worry that you're going to get herpes. I, I worry about these things for you. And just stay away from the Kardashian thoughts in general because all they can do, any man who gets sucked into their siren song, gets destroyed and just discarded out. Don't be one of those guys. And again, I'm holding out hope for you that your career and your talent match the overinflated elevation of your iconic status. Guys, I'll post a poll at the Cinema Rock Facebook group. You let me know what you think of Chalamet and Kylie Jenner dating. There's a link for PayPal, make a donation. There's also a link to the website that hosts all the Clitical Gregorio feeds. Go check it out. But the easiest way to listen to this is on Apple and Spotify. And while you're doing that, please post and rate and review. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.